Is your city broke? I'm Charles Blaine and this is Texas Tomorrow. Are you worried about your kids' future? You should be. You're listening to Texas Tomorrow with Charles Blaine. Join Charles as he talks about the people and issues that are affecting you and your family at the local level of government. The finances of your city might seem boring and irrelevant to your day-to-day life, but they're really anything but. Whether or not your city is financially healthy determines a laundry list of things, from how much they choose to tax you, to if there's money to improve services, hire more police, fix more roads, whether or not your trash is picked up, all of these things that we see in a city on a day-to-day basis. But most people don't really pay attention to their city's finances until it's too late. It's not until the city is threatening layoffs or tax hikes or bonds or in some severe cases bankruptcy that people start to pay attention. And that's not surprising because cities make all the financial data incredibly complicated to understand for the average person. And the one report that does consolidate all this and makes it a little easier comes out at the end of the year between Christmas and New Year's and no one ever really sees it. But luckily, some organizations go out of their way to make this data accessible to us all. And one of those organizations is Truth in Accounting. Every year, they release a financial state of the cities report, which looks at the financial state of the 70 largest cities in the country. And with Texas growing so fast, it's no surprise that many of the cities in the state are at the top of that list. So the report found that in total, 75 cities had $595 billion worth of debt between them. But only one Texas city came in their top five in best fiscal shape, and that was Plano, Texas. The report gave Plano a B rating and claimed that a taxpayer surplus of $5,100 existed in the city, mainly because of increased tax revenue and all the federal relief aid that cities got from COVID. Unlike most cities, though, Plano's pension and their retiree health care systems were well-funded. Corpus Christi, Arlington, and San Antonio all led the list with cities that we're seeing surpluses in, each of them receiving B grades, but none of them doing as well as Plano was. But most of those surpluses, again, were owed to federal relief aid, so that's a one-time funding source, or increased tax revenue, which once that starts to flatline again, won't exist. And so while they were praised for their pension systems, they weren't praised for their retiree health care systems because they're paying a little too little into those systems every year, which can be a problem in the future. So simply put, cities contribute an amount every single year into their employee pension system and into their retiree health care system. So that's health care for formerly employed city workers. Every year, the cities will defer the amount that they have to pay into it because they don't often have that amount available to pay into it. So they'll simply write an IOU to these systems telling them that in the future they will make these payments. But they do this over and over and over again, and it amounts to a lot of debt that they're never going to be able to pay because they weren't able to pay it before. So now some cities are facing even less of a rosy picture. So El Paso, for instance, got a C grade on this report for having a taxpayer burden at $800. So what that means is that for all of the citizens in El Paso to pay off the existing debt, they would each have to pay about $800. And unfortunately, El Paso is on the low end of cities with um, a taxpayer burden on this list. Austin and Fort Worth, for instance, both got D ratings on the report. Austin had a $6,500 taxpayer burden, whereas Fort Worth had a $7,400 one. Houston and Dallas got D ratings for Houston's $9,000 taxpayer burden and Dallas's $9,600 taxpayer burden. This means that for these cities, taxpayers would have to contribute $9,600 extra dollars with no improvement in services, no overall benefit, just to pay down the existing debt incurred by their elected and appointed officials. And at the end of the day, according to Truth in Accounting, 53 out, of the, 53 out of the 75 cities that they measured didn't have enough to pay their bills at all. And so this means that they're going to come to you asking you for money. That's why bonds and tax increases and stadiums and all the other things that cities and counties spend money on matter. We often don't pay attention when they're approved or we just go and vote yes at the ballot box. But ultimately, we're on the hook for paying those in the end. So whether you live in a small town or a big city, a small county or a big county, these things are happening on a daily basis around you. And you should be aware of them because when they get down to the bottom line, it comes down to the services that you pay and the, the services that you receive and the taxes that you pay that determine the fiscal health of the city. And so I hope you'll pay attention to what's going on in your city and the things that your council members or commissioners are passing on a regular basis, and also take notice of the things that you vote on at the ballot box that add to that bottom line. 
So I hope you took something away from this. And if you did, make sure you tell a friend, a family member, share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you see fit. And make sure you tune in for next week's episode of Texas Tomorrow.